Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to the first IEEE International Conference on Sustainable Technology for Power and Energy Systems. Uh, this is an IEEE conference and is also organized by the National Institute of Technology, Spiringar, Kashmir, and IIT Jampo. Initially, thank you very much everyone for being here and attending to this keynote. Uh, my name is Francisco Gonzalez Longat and today I will be talking about operability challenges in the Great Britain system. I will talk about the challenges and potential solutions by research and development. And before I start, I would like to say thank you very much to the organizers, especially Dr. Anu Shulka, that is the convener of this conference, for this amazing invitation and the opportunity to be here with all of you. And before we start, probably you are wondering, who is this person that is talking to me? Well, as usually, I recommend that you Google, uh, that you use Google and identify the person and if you go to google and put my name you will find around 39 thousands of entries and that is because my name is francisco gonzalez longat and i am currently a full professor in electrical power engineering at the university of southeastern norway and also at the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom. But also I have the privilege of being the founder and the leader of the DNCs lab. And DNCs means, is the short name, the acronym for Digital Energy System Lab. That is basically a facility for real-time simulation, hardware in the loop, and for developing the next generation of digital energy systems. And I would like to clarify that all the opinions and all the, the comments in these presentations, they are only my responsibility. And the university or any other person are responsible of that. And also, I suggest that if you want to get a copy of those slides, please go to my research repository. And as you can see here, there is a link that you can go over there and download the slides. Also, if you want to watch the full version of this presentation in 4K high resolution, you can go to my YouTube channel, okay? My YouTube channel is very simple to find. You can go into YouTube and Google my name over there. But let's start here. Before I start to talk about the challenges, operational challenges in the Great Britain system, I would like to present some context and motivation. What is important right now in electrical power systems? And to do that, I will start using something that is not necessarily coming from the electricity wall. If you look over here, this is a very famous photo. This photo has been used for many people, especially for marketing, in order to introduce something quite important. If you look this photo, this is a photo from 1900. It was a Sunday, a Easter Sunday, in the famous Fifth Avenue in New York City. And what is important over here is that you can ask yourself, where is the car? And if you take time, you realize that probably everything that is moving in that photo represents horse carriages. But there is a single car, a single car in that photo. But then I now present you the photo of 1913. That means 13 years later, and we are talking about, again, Sunday Easter in the Fifth Avenue in the famous New York City in the United States of America. What is interesting here is making the question again, but in a different way. 
where is the horse carriage? And if you look over there, the majority of the transportation in the Fifth Avenue in 1913 is based in internal combustion engines. And answering this question, where is the horse carriage? You can see that there is a single one. With this example, with this comparison between two different photos, what I am trying to tell you is that a technology make a change, a huge change in the real life of all us. The internal combustion engine, the internal combustion engine car replaced the horse carriage. And that was basically a technological development that was the responsibility of Henry Ford. There is a famous quote that say that Henry Ford say, if I had listened in the masses, all they wanted was a force, horses, faster horses. But he create a new technology. That new technology create a massive change, a market disruption. And for many years, the internal combustion engine has been dominant. Right now, there is again a change. Right now, we are moving to electric vehicles, but with this example, what I can tell you is changing the technology represents a huge change for the society. And this massive technological disruption is coming from this invention, from this development of Henry Ford, starting in July of 1903, developing the first car. And then in 1908, he established the successful Model T that was dominant in 1913 at the Easter Sunday in the Fifth Avenue. But now let me change just a bit the photo because now I would like to show you the context that I am interested. Now let me show you this photo. And in this photo, I change all the horse carriages. And now also I change the year and the place because this is the situation in some countries. As you can see over there, instead of horse carriages, we are talking about synchronous machines. And that is the reality in some countries. In some countries, the question is, where is the power converter? And you will take time and you will realize that there is a single power converter in this photo. And in this photo, we are talking about the paradigm of synchronous machine dominated power system, where the power converter is a minority that it's not having so huge impact on the performance and, and the behavior of the system. But now let me use the second photo. In the second photo here, what you can see is now we have so many power converters and the question here, the valid question here is, where is the synchronous machine? And if you are very, very careful, you will realize that there is a single synchronous machine in this electrical power system. Probably you are wondering why this person is talking about now power converters and synchronous machine. And the reality is that the electrical power systems, they are changing. Because many of those synchronous machines that they were based in some technologies that they were aggressive to the environment, they has been, uh, they has been successfully substituted by renewable technologies. But those new renewable energy resources, they typically use a power converter as interface to the grid. As a consequence, in the past, the synchronous machine was a majority and today we start to talk about the synchronous machine as minority. This is just a motivation and, and one message that I want that you take away. I want that you take away the idea that in some countries, the way that we are producing electricity is changing dramatically fast and going into more and more power converters. Well, now let me tell you about what is the motivation behind those changes. And the motivation is 
that we are in a climate crisis. We are in a moment, a very crucial moment for the modern society because the CO2 emissions start to create massive problems. Many people talk about climate change, but today the United Nations has saying that that is a climate emergency. And many, and many countries around the world, they are already committed, they are already committed to reach the zero net emissions. And the net zero emission is a, is a huge challenge for many, many countries. In this slide over here, you can see that some countries, they already reach the net zero emissions. And you can see countries like Suriname and Bhutan, where they are already zero net emission. Of course, they are using a lot of renewable, basically hydropower. But in other more industrialized societies like Germany, Sweden, European Union, United Kingdom, you can see that they are a commitment, a legal commitment to reach the net zero emissions. For instance, in the case that I am really interested in, that is the United Kingdom, in the, on 27 June 2019, UK became the first major economy that was using a law to introduce the target of net zero emission for 2050. And that was a huge step forward in 2019. And the target is reaching net zero emissions in 2050. However, I must be honest, inside, inside, the, inside the United Kingdom, there are several cities and there are several companies that they are more ambitious about reaching the net zero emission. For instance, in Scotland, the city of Glasgow, Glasgow say that for 2030, they will reach the net zero emission. And, all, and also in the North England, in Manchester, they say that for 2038, they will reach the net zero emission. And finally, another beautiful city in the south, that is Bristol, they already committed for 2030 for the net zero emission. Other countries, other countries like Ireland, Chile, Fiji, Iceland, and so on, they have those commitments on the paper, especially for proposed legislation. But what is interesting is that many institutions around the world, they are committed, but more than the commitment is a delivery plan. And that is the reason that here I am presenting a very important document that is coming from the International Energy Agency. The International Energy Agency released a report that is called Net Zero by 2050, a roadmap for the global energy sector. And it, that document is extremely, extremely important because this document defined the path, the way to reach net zero emission by 2050, considering at least four different, four different areas electricity and heat, industry, transport, building, and so on. What is interesting over here, I highlighted here in red color, several of the very important targets, especially for electricity. For instance, in 2030, we are expecting around 2,020 gigawatts annual solar and wind addition. We are talking about that for 2030, we are expecting that 60% of the global car sales will be electric vehicles. And for 2035, we are expecting that 50% of the heavy truck sales are electric. And at that year, 2035, we are expecting to stop the internal combustion car sales. For the electricity system, it's a very important year because the overall net zero emission electricity will be reached in the majority of the advanced economies with worldwide. By 2040, by 2040, 
we are expecting that 50 percent of the fuel used in aviation will be low emission to be honest the aviation is one of the sectors that require or has massive challenges to reduce the CO2 emission. But coming back to electricity, net zero emissions and electricity sector is expected to be reached by 24, uh, 2040. And that is a huge challenge for all the transmission system operator system uh, system operators around the world. We are expecting that for 2040, all the coal and all the oil power plants supposed to disappear from the electricity sector globally. That is a number that is very important to be considered. And by 2050, almost 70% of the electricity generation globally will be coming from renewable, specifically solar power, solar PV system, photovoltaic system, and wind power. What is important that you understand is that this net zero by 2050 is already a possibility, a real possibility that will help to reach the target of reducing the consequence of this climate emergency. Some countries are doing individually more and more effort. For instance, in the case of the British electricity system, as you can see, I, I, and as I say before, the UK Climate Change Act of 2019 established the target of reaching net zero by 2050. But here in this slide, I am presenting very interesting numbers, very interesting numbers about the progression of the net zero target by the national grid electricity system operator that is basically the electricity system operator of the Great Britain. And what is interesting here is several of the beautiful achievements by the national grid electricity system operator. For instance, on February on, on 13 of February 2021, we reached the maximum record of wind power generation with 17,502 megawatts. On 20 of April 2020, we reached the peak for the solar power generation, and we are talking about 9,680 megawatts. <coughs> Sorry. Regarding coal, well, we have been for long periods of time without coal, and the record was reached in 16 of Yul June of 2020 with more than uh, 1,600 hours without coal. But if we look the indicator, the very important indicator, that is the number of grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, what is important is that we promise to reach that number by 2050 zero gram of CO2 per kilowatts. However, we already hit very low moments of very low CO2 emissions in the electric se sector. For instance, the minimum carbon intensity was reached on 5th of April 2021 and we reached around 39 grams of CO2 per kilowatts hour. What I'm telling you is that the path, the transition to reaching the net zero for the British electricity system is becoming more and more real and more and more possible in a few years' time. But now the question is, what is, the, what is the, the, the implication of this transition to the electrical power system? Well, the, the transition is massive. The Institute of Energy and Economic and Financial Analysis in Australia, they released a document talking about this transition. And this, in this slide that is, that is inspired on that document, you can see several of the dimensions where the changes are happening. And let me start with something that is clear. The way that we are producing electricity is changing a lot. 
we we are we are departing from the old paradigm of large power plants with a lot of inertia and basically with a lot of synchronous machine we are moving into a power system that is highly distributed with a small size generation and a lot of power converters with low or zero inertia from the from the distribution point of view a lot of these small and highly distributed energy resources are located at the distribution system for that reason we are departing from this very old paradigm of one direction and top to bottom and instead we are moving into more active distribution systems where we have power flows that they are moving in two directions and they are very dramatic changes inside in, in inside the system on the other hand the customer is changing a lot in the past the customer used to be passive and only paying for the electricity that they consume but today many good technologies that we call low carbon technologies they are reaching they are reaching the customer today there are many many countries around the world that they are using solar pv panels at the roof of the houses but also including battery, battery energy storage and the reality of the electric electric mobility is is going intensive in many countries around the world and also the heat pumps start to be a reality especially in other countries and what is happening is that the customer as we used to call in the past is disappearing because the customer right now has so many technologies that allow to change the behavior of the of the consumption and for that reason the customer is becoming more and more active and participating in the operation of the electrical system based on pays and earns that means that the new the old customer is becoming what we call today the prosumer and the prosumer is somebody that is able to consume electricity but at the same time produce electricity and that can be very very active in the market and that is a very good news because now we have the possibility of getting flexibility coming from this very important actor inside the system like the customer on the other hand markets are changing in the past the markets used to be centralized used to be nationals used to be energy only market but today the situation is changing as the customer became a prosumer as new small technologies are appearing in every single place in the distribution system well the markets must start to be decentralized and ignoring the boundaries boundaries between transmission and distribution are disappearing and the and the data flow between those two um, subsystem of the power system start to be very active and producing many good information for operation and control another thing is that the market start to be regional and also the possibility of the two side market finally to cope with all those changes the way that we are operating the electrical power system will change in the past we have human beings that has been operating the electrical system however with this dramatic change on the technologies inside the system the dynamic behavior is changing a lot and we need to have something that take decision faster and that can support uh, the human being taking the decisions that is the reason that right now there is an interesting focus on research regarding machine-based learning and real-time and age of the grid artificial intelligence now we need a power system operator that must be far far away of the reactive behavior it must be proactive taking actions instead of just waiting to see what's happened and that is a huge way for go in order to change the operation all those changes are motivating what we call the operational challenges 
of the electrical system and in few minutes I will be talking about the operational challenges for the very specific case of Great Britain. But another thing that I want to tell you is, let me go to the next slide. If you look in this slide, what is happening in this slide is I am showing you the basic changes that I was talking in the previous slide. However, in this slide, what I want that all of you notice is something very important. As you can say, many of the technologies for generation, for transmission, for storage, for, for loads, all those technologies are changing. We are having power converters in huge wind farms. We are having power converters in solar PV plants. We are having power converters and battery energy storage. But also at the customer side, we are having power electronic converters embed in many technologies like the electric vehicle, like the small battery energy storage inside the home, like the heat pumps and so on. What I want that you understand is that many of the technologies that we are having right now in the electrical system, they are coming from power converters. And those power converters have a very interesting behavior. They are totally different to the traditional, to the classical synchronous machine. They are more fragile, they are more volatile, and as a consequence, the frequency and the voltage control start to be an issue. Well, but many people believe that that photo that I present of, nine, of 1900 and 1913, many people believe that that is just my imagination. And that is far, far away. Depending on the country that you are, the penetration of renewable generation based on power converters can be dramatically high. And in this slide, what I want to show you is the results of the National Electricity Market Operator in Australia that they presented in, on March last year, 2021, an amazing report showing the changes in the half hourly wind and solar generation compared with the synchronous generation. Here on the vertical axis, you can see the gigawatts related with the synchronous generation. And on the horizontal axis, you can see the inverter based resources. I mean, wind power and solar power. And what is interesting is that here there are three plots. With this color, you can see the year 2018. Then you can see the year 2019 and the year 2020. And what is important to see over those three years and highlight is the change on the penetration level. As you can see, higher wind and solar penetrations are reached over the years. Maximum levels rose from 38% in 2018, 47% in 2019, until reaching 52% in 2020. What I am telling you with this massive penetration of 52% means that the inverter-based resources, they were majority, they were majority in the generation mix and the minority were the synchronous generations. And that is a very important, very important factor because more than 40% of the time in 2019 and more than 109 days in 2020, the synchronous generation was a minority in that system. That means that we are already in the photo that I introduced at the very beginning of this presentation, where I say to you that the electrical power systems are reaching a point where the synchronous generation become a minority. But probably in front of you, you are asking, okay, the number of synchronous generators is decreasing in the electrical power system, but what is the issue? Well, that, 
That is an extremely interesting and very good question. As I said before, the situation is changing. The number of synchronous generators connected to the power grid is reducing and the number of power converters connected to the systems is increasing. You can see here in this slide that I put the point for 2020 for the Australian case where 52% of the penetration, where 52% of the penetration came from inverter-based resources. And that means that the synchronous machine at that moment was a minority with 48%. And one interesting question here is how these changes are present over the time. Well, we can think about this 100% synchronous generation as the starting point of the power utility history. I mean, at the very beginning of the electricity companies, all the generation were ba was based on synchronous machine. But over the time, the need for more environmentally friendly generation make that the power converter penetration increase. And what is relevant here and very important is the question, can we reach 100% inverter-based resources? For many people, this question looks like something exotic. But in reality, there are already many systems around the world that they are working with 100% of inverter-based resources. And I am talking about microgrids. They are microgrids that they are already 100% inverter-based resources. That means that we already demonstrate that the possibility of reaching 100% of inverter-based resources is a possibility, but we demonstrate that in very small scale. However, if you ask me, is possible to reach 100% inverter resources in a very or highly interconnected power system like the continental Europe, I will tell you that probably I will never see that in my lifetime. And the reason is that the synchronous machine is still a very productive, a very effective way to deliver services to the grid. And there are many reasons that the nuclear power will stay for a few more years in the generation mix. And in that case, the synchronous machine will stay in the continental Europe system. But what I want to show you here in the next slide is a very important message for all of you. We have, we have been using the synchronous machine for many years. We, we develop, we design, we, de we operate the electrical power system based in this beautiful synchronous machine, an electromechanical conversion device where all the principles are very well known based on physics and um, basically electromagnetism and mechanics. But now we have this beautiful power electronic converter. But the power electronic converter is dramatically, dramatically different, especially when we are talking about the dynamic performance. In this slide, I would like to tell you that they look similar, but they are extremely different. And for this illustration, I would like to tell you that the synchronous machine is like the horse, and many people look to the power converter like the zebra. But the zebra is not equal to a horse. The zebra have four legs, of course, but the colors and the straps are very different. With this, what I want to show you is the message that those two different components have very different behavior characteristics. And as a consequence, the type of services that they can provide, it's very, very difficult. And let me start with the beautiful synchronous machine. The synchronous machine has been underestimated for many years. The synchronous machine is simple in design, based on physics, electromagnetism, mechanics. It's extremely simple. 
the synchronous machine requires just very few controllers and those controllers are extremely, extremely simple. But the synchronous machine has a very good properties, very good properties that offer services to the grid that only in recent times we start to care. For instance, a synchronous, a synchronous machine, if we apply a three-phase short circuit in the sta on, on the stator, you will get short circuit currents that can be several times, can be several times the nominal current. And for many years, that was, that was a very important information that we used to protect the machines using something called overcurrent protection system. And to be honest, that is a natural property of the synchronous machine. The machine responds with this huge current and the machine is able to handle that kind of currents. But also, the synchronous machine has another beautiful property that we didn't consider for many decades, and that is the inertia. Because the synchronous machine has a, rota a rotating component that we call rotor and there are kinetic energy stored in that rotor. And when the frequency of the signals at the stator of this synchronous machine change, the machine in natural form, without any kind of measurement, digital signal processing, or any control, the machine alterate the rotational speed based on this, rotation, on this rotational inertia. And this change allowed the machine to release some kinetic energy and produce what we call frequency response. What I am telling you is that this beautiful property that is called rotational inertia is something natural that is coming with every single synchronous machine. But that is not the same case. That is not the same case for the power converters. Also, Another property that we didn't care so much in the past is what we call the system strength. The system strength is the capacity of the, of the power system of produce these beautiful sine waves to represent the voltages and the currents. And we assume that the system strength was enough in a power, com uh, sorry, in a synchronous machine dominated system. But now with the power converter, the history starts to change. Power converters, they are extremely different. They don't have any kind of mechanism. They don't have any kind of mechanism in order to store energy. They require a primary energy resource. They require so many controllers, including very fast controllers related with the currents and with the, with, with the commutation but also slow controllers, other controllers like the frequency control, the AC voltage control, the DC voltage control. What is important is that those power converters, they behave in a very different way. They require measurements like the phase lock and the PLL, what we call the phase lock, has some very specific and important behavior that they affect the, 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 the dynamic response of those systems. Also, there is no mechanical inertia. The power availability is a huge problem of this. What I'm telling you is that the response of the power converter is inherently defined by the energy sources or storage used in the DC size of the power converter. It's, more, it's very, very different than the one compared with the synchronous machine. But what is the issue? Well, the issue is that the problem is increasing a lot because we are losing the very good properties and the very amazing features coming from the synchronous machine. And the problem is not the increase of the power converter. The problem is the decrease of the synchronous machine and that we are losing many of the services coming from these beautiful machines. 
what is important is that to tackle these kind of issues, we need to start to think about grid codes defining mandatory services and procedural services, and also possibility of enabling markets to create those services to be delivered in order to reach security levels, appropriate security levels inside the system. But the situation, the issue coming from the integration, the power converters is not new. For quite a few time, we have been talking about that the power converters are able to modify the power system dynamics. And the good news is that in April 2020, the IEEE Power and Energy Society pro produced or published a technical report. That technical report is called the PES TR77. And this, this very beautiful piece of paper, this beautiful document, establish the stability definition and characterization of the dynamic behavior in systems with high penetration of power electronic interfaces. And the most important part of this document is that new two new forms of stabilities are introduced. One that is called resonant stability and is a response for some electromechanical behaviors that we have been noticing for many years, probably since 1960s or 70s. But the second one is the converter-driven stability. And the converter-driven stability is basically, is basically what we know, what we know is the interaction between the controllers, between the different power converters inside the electrical system. They are fast controllers, they are slow controllers, and as a consequence, they can be fast interaction and slow interaction, okay? Well, but I am here to talk about some of the challenges of the GB system regarding operation. And zero carbon operability is something that is extremely important to reach net zero. And to be honest, the GB system has been changing a lot. In this graph that is moving over there, you can see how the carbon intensity has been changing. But in the recent time, those changes has been really, really fast. To be honest, in 1990s, 65% of the electricity in Great Britain was, pro was coming from burning coal. But right now, Great Britain is probably the faster decarbonizing electricity system in the whole world as the system operators say. And here, I love this plot over here. And I love this plot over here because you can see over the years how the intensity of the carbon emission has been changed. And in 2015, you can see over there, we start to restrict the use of the carbon, um, the carbon power plants. In 2017, we reached a coal-free generation in the electricity system. And then we are still evolving and blue start to appear because it was a zero generation system. To be honest, we reached 18 days and six hours and 10 minutes without call. And from there in 2006, in 2020, we reached the longest period without this kind of call for 67 days. And the situation is increasing the periods without any kind of carbon generation include into the generation mid. The ambition for the transmission system operator in Great Britain, National Grid Electricity System Operator, is to reach 100% zero carbon emission electricity by 2025. And that is that represents a huge challenge for the system operator. But a very interesting question is, how national grid electricity system operator is dealing with the measurement of this zero carbon. And national grid system operator have an indicator that is called the zero carbon operability. And the zero carbon operability is a, a, a ratio between the zero carbon transmission connected generation and the total transmission connected generation. That ratio represents the percentages 
of the zero carbon generation is uh, uh, operating in the system. We reach the maximum zero carbon operability index on 2021, specifically of 5th of April 2021. We reach 84.6% of the transmission generation coming from zero carbon generation system. And that is a huge, that was a huge step forward for the CO2 emissions of the Great Britain system. And that situation is going on. And in 2021, we have been able to identify that between 80 and 85% of this zero net generation zero carbon generation can be included can be included in the transmission system and we are expecting that that limit will reach to 85 to 90 percent by 2023 but now we say that there are many many challenges many many challenges coming from the Mm, introduction of this net, net mm, zero carbon generation. But now I would like to present to you three very important aspects that I call the 3D. 3D because it's D for decarbonization, D for decentralization, and D, D for digitalization. Because something that is important is that we are declining the penetration of CO2 emissions in the generation system. However, that is caused by the decrease on the number of coal fire generation. And in the future, we are expecting some penetration of synchronous machine, but coming from the nuclear power plants. And here we are talking about decentralization. And decentralization is one of the main important target for national grid electric system operator because the number of small generators that will be feeding the grid at very different places is, is, is increasing very high. However, as those small generation are replacing the huge centralized generation, the way that those new form of generation behave is very, very different. Solar and wind powers, they have very specific characteristic compared to the fossil fuel. For instance, fossil fuels, they are very simple to ramp up. If we need to increase the, the generation, this kind of power plants, they can be dispatched and increase the production. But using solar or wind power, there is no way that we can do that because those kind of generations, they are coming from weather dependent technologies. And as a consequence, we need to find another way to produce the balance between generation and demand. And that is where the concept of flexibility and dispatchability of generators start to be very, very crucial, especially when we are talking about the balance and control of frequency response and also voltage control and inertial response. The good news, the good news is that something is coming up very, very hard, very, very fast, and that is the digitalization. Digitalization is a key. It's a very important element. It's a very important element to reach the net zero because the latest technologies are allowing us to, to, to make automatics many processes, many products, and many services. And as I say a few slides ago, artificial intelligent machine learning data-driven methods, they are making very simple for humans to operate the system. Because right now we have more information and faster information that allow to take decisions in more efficient way. One example of this digitalization 
is a service that is produced by national grid system operators. I mean, by the providers, of course, to the national grid electricity system operator. And that is the dynamic containment. The dynamic containment is a, a, a service that was installed in the GB system in September 2020. And it was basically a service designed to compensate some of the very fast um, and very changing situation in low energy systems. To be honest, the dynamic containment is allowed to deliver the service so fast and rapid in order to compensate, in order to compensate the disturbance. And this service, to be honest, is procured to a day ahead auction seven days per week where the operators of the distributed energy resources like batteries they can they can offer those services with the assets by delivering a, um, a specific price that they should respond and based on the conditions near to the closer time and that is one of the advantages that we have been taking from digital technologies in order to enable faster services, in order to operate the system with a low penetration of synchronous machines. Well, it's almost 51 minutes, and I think it's time to present some closing remarks here. Some key takeaway for you. And to be honest, in this presentation, I show you how the electrical systems are changing, where are changing, and also some of the possible options to improve the behavior, like for instance, the digitalization or taking advantages of the dispersed generation. What I, we need to do is basically take into consideration that the power system is changing. It's changing a lot, but what is important is that we understand that the problem is not the integration of the power converter. No, 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 no. The situation is caused because, because the mm, synchronous machines are disappearing, are decreasing in number and volume from the electrical system. But what we need to understand is that the power converter can be our friend. To be honest, the power converter is a very beautiful device. It's a very fragile, yes, I, I know, it's a very fragile device. However, he has the possibility of responding extremely fast. And what we need to think about and reflect is why do we need to keep attached to the old paradigm of the power system developing, thinking about synchronous generators? We already demonstrate that 52% of the penetration in Australia in 2020 was based on power converters. Why we don't take the advantages of that very fast device in order to redefine the way that we are operating and we are designing the electrical power system. That is basically one of the reflections that I want that all of you take away. The way that we are designing the electrical power system, the way that we are operating the system must change. And it's time for us to think in a different way and find innovative, very innovative way to control those converters to make the system operate in a more secure fashion, in a more resilient and reliable and economic way. Well, this is the end of my presentation. I hope that you find something interesting to reflect in this presentation and you take the best that we present here for your new research ideas or reflecting about the future of the electrical power systems. And I think it's time for question and answers. 
and I will be extremely happy if I can answer some of your questions. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you.